and he is channeling earth spikes at them. The defense bonus for um, the hill is ignored because earth spikes is okay. earth spikes. Okay. Um, when making this attack, ignore cover and the plus two defense bonus for elevation. Um, what's their defense? 14. 14. Balder is going to pay to boost and pay to cast spell, and he is going to be Fury 4 for the rest of the game. Um, and it's an AoE 3 with a 10 inch range, and I'm going to target the one who is able to kill both of them. Targeting the one in the yeah, middle. Yeah, I'm targeting the one in the middle. Six. So I need eight on three dice. Eight on eight. three dice. Ooh. So close. <laughs> Dang it, I really wanted to do Iron Fist. Pow 13. Them. They're dead. All of them. Well, um, he is. He um. is. And then it's Pow 7 or Pow 6. You always round up, if I remember correctly. Round up. So Pow 7s, seven. what's their armor? 11. Uh, so you roll 5 or I, higher. 5 or higher kills, dead, dead, and dead. So I have to make a command check. There is a click, soft and silvery, at my throat. The black velvet bag over my head is now locked in place, and I won't be able to see a darn thing until I'm safely aboard the... Avoid... <laughs> safely aboard the Void Heron and bound for freedom. 1,500 words, I think, 1,200 words, somewhere in there. It only gets worse for him and everybody because it's a horror story. And horror stories do not end well for anybody. Uh, yes, it's called Flight of the Runerite, and it appears in an anthology called Space Eldritch. And it's available as an ebook, and it's available uh, now as in print from uh, Amazon. So. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to write, and that's the one that I played nothing but scary music while I wrote it. <laughs> and I kept asking myself, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen? This is probably the worst thing that could happen. And then I would write that, and I would look at it and say, no, that's Howard, the space opera writer, imagining what the best thing that can happen is when you plan on having the characters live. What's really the best thing that can happen, or the worst thing that can happen? So, yeah. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's delightfully worse. And I'm, I'm contemplating writing another story in that setting, but no point in me telling you about that until you've read the first one. Um, I got permission from Privateer okay. Press to uh -huh. read from one of the Skull Island Expeditions novels. And I had to turn off. So I promised a Q&A. What questions do you have? And does, do people have things that I need to sign or sketch or whatever? It's, I'm, oh, let me, please, let me take care of that. You guys are so patient. Reading is hard. Oh, yes, there is a page in the back. And the page in the back is when I draw the sequel to Maxim 14. I remember how I, yeah, I usually orient it up like this. The sequel to Maxim 14. Mad science means never having to ask what's the worst thing that could happen. Have you seen the picture of Maxim 14? The one where he's electrocuting a weird piece of shit. A weird, uh, some alien thing sitting in a, in a container. Looks suspiciously like the little aliens from the movie Aliens. See? Sequel to Maxim 14. <laughs> What's the worst thing that could happen? Well, it could get away. Flight of the Rune Rite. Um, my friend Nate wanted to do a, uh, a horror anthology of science fiction horror with, you know, good science fiction but with mystical horror elements in it. So a blend of sci-fi and Lovecraftian Cthulhu mythos stuff. And he invited me, because I'm a space opera guy, and said, would you like to do this? I said, I, um, and, and, and then as I, was, as I was about to say no, 
the part of my brain that knows how you advance your career said, this is something that you have no idea really how to do. You've never written horror. You don't read Lovecraft because you don't like Lovecraft because he wasn't a very good writer. Um, I mean, he was a fine world builder, but his writing is just bone dry and not in the creepy way. It's, it's, he's the Stephen Wright of horror. Um, you know, when, when, when a character's reaction to the most horrifying thing in the world is, and it was the most horrifying thing he had ever seen. It was so unimaginably horrible. It was, well, that's not horrifying. You've told me it's horrible, but you haven't shown me it's horrible. And you don't need to show me the monster. You need to show me, um, you know, his, his jaw hung open and a single tear of blood emerged from his left eye uh, as he felt his pus, pulse quicken and his gorge rise. And okay, now I'm feeling weird because I've never been so scared that happened. What is that? Wow, that's unimaginable horror. He cried blood? Cool! Um, and so, and I'm, so I, I have that discussion. I have that discussion in my own head. I'm thinking, I don't much like the way Lovecraft writes, but if I decided to write horror, I wonder what would happen. But not daily. My, my favorite is tell them how many times you've missed a day. That's my favorite. Part, right? Yeah, that's a rarity in my it really is. I do not understand why more people don't do that, but. Well. So dwarf, full plate, no beard, no eyebrows. Um, uh, okay. All right. Uh, and detect traps with his face. Yes. Uh, Got it. That is. Yeah. There's some, there's some great stories about set it going. The door is trapped. All right. Everybody stand to the side. Well, I'm on it. Well, it's up to you guys, but if you'd like to try a game, I could get you a couple games if you'd like. And then you can hang out and talk. Okay. 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 Okay.
Ja. Because he's an adventuring party, he's got to have the adventurer's backpack on. True. He was the, okay. the pack mule of the, the party. Okay. You, find me, you find me a dwarf who doesn't get stuck in the role of being the pack mule for the party. I'll find you a dwarf that nobody in the party knows what they can do. Is your card? Or do you want a bag? Movement rate, not affected by There you go. One trap detecting dwarf. Awesome. Would you hold that up? That is fantastic. That is so cool. Trap detecting hairless dwarf. <laughs> the problem with a hairless dwarf is that you take the beard off and it just looks like a fat elf. <laughs> <laughs>